Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special, <laughs> Today's special selection comes at us from Who Am I? Abigor, Morning Star Anthropophagia, a nice song to eat your neighbor to. So that's an interesting uh, bit of context. I went and looked up what anthropophagia was, and it is the practice of eating human flesh. And I thought, so it's a synonym for cannibalism. It's not. This is an umbrella term for anyone or anything consuming human flesh. Cannibalism is specifically humans consuming human flesh. So I find it interesting, then, that the context is a fine song to eat your neighbor to or something along those lines uh, because that is specifically cannibalism and if the song is about that why'd they go with anthropophagia i mean it is technically the larger broader term but when you have something specific like that cannibalism seems like the right way to go be more specific about it i don't know either way <laughs> uh we got the upside down cross and a pentagram both in the logo this is certainly black metal right there's no way around that we have the um uh the monochromatic or i guess like very sepia tinged album art this is black metal it has to be black metal and i think we've listened to abigort's before too and i just can't remember i'm obviously uh what's that word I can't remember. I think we're going to have to sit here till I remember it. All right. Let's get into this. I guess I can't... Uh, I really can't think of that word, though, when you delay something. When you put it off. Let's just dive into this. We got some Abigor ahead of us. Let's see what's going on with them. Procrastinate, that's the word. I was procrastinating. I will say that so far though, this is a higher fidelity production than I was expecting. It's a very fuzzy, gritty guitar tone. Like a buzz saw, but I can hear the notes within it, so that's a positive. We have some interesting space for ornamental ideas. We had the little shimmering of the chimes or symbols previously. That really quick galloping. There's a guitar, a guitar part. Dun, 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 dun. Just really tight, robotic picking. That was wild. Very clean. Really interesting drum patterns. Got a little bit of a black and roll thing going on here. Wow. 
wild shrieking behind it, though. field recording stuff. I thought I heard like a vase shattering. They're certainly adding in some atmospheric ideas. Really cool symbol work. the slurping sounds. Huh. Alright, so here's the deal. I'm just going to come out and be very forward with this. I didn't like that, but I didn't not like that. It's one of those things that intrigues me. Black Metal has a very cool pocket of it. Not gonna say I genuinely enjoy everything in this cool pocket, but it's definitely interesting. This is one of those tracks. I really don't know what to make of it. It, uh. It's all over the place. Let's kind of start with that. Let's talk about everything at once because it's really tough to break this up into any specific idea because each idea that's present is present for not very long. We have some black and roll ideas that sit in here. We have some traditional uh, third wave black metal, um, just, you know, 16th notes and, and the alternating bass and kick um, and, and the growling stuff and not a lot of bass sound, just kind of having this hyper compressed thing. 
but there's also some more experimental ideas in here. There's some noisy things. That I don't know if I would necessarily call them noise rock, but they do remind me of what groups like Shoo Shoo do. Um, it's, it's got, I don't know, it's sort of all over the place. It has a lot of atmospheric sounds in it, not instrumental sounds, what I would typically refer to as field recording stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure I heard the smashing of a vase, and yes, I'm very certain it was that. It sounds different than a smashing of like a, a mug or a glass, uh, like a wine glass or something. They all have very distinct sounds to them, and this was very much a vase. <laughs> There's a jangling of chains at one point. Uh, I think a lot of it is just to set the atmosphere for this, because I doubt most people are... Um, willfully open up to cannibalism assuming that that's what this track is about i uh, usually have to detain them in some sort so the chains kind of alluded to that uh, the vase alluded to some sort of altercation a physical component to this uh this whole event there aren't any lyrics here on the Bandcamp page which it doesn't really allude to much but it's not usually a good sign either this feels like a super vague uh, track that's way off on the fringe of mainstream music. There's like a not a great chance it's actually on Genius. I, I usually rely on the, the bands putting the lyrics up on Bandcamp. So I don't know if we're actually going to get to learn what the song is about, but some of those uh, atmospheric sounds certainly help paint a specific picture of the story that's happening here. Uh, there's also, going back to the noise element, there's some avant-garde concepts in here, specifically harmonically. Let's let's dive into this. I feel like I actually have some meat on this, but, oh, geez, I just... <laughs> oh, man. We're just going to ignore what I just said. I feel like there's something to dive into with this topic. There are several sections of this track that focus on more of the black metal sound, going for darker, sinister uh, harmonic ideas, uh, laying into tritones, really getting as much of that ominous, antagonistic sound as they can out of it. But it's not the only harmonic quality that they go for. The black and roll section lightens it up a little bit, goes for more of a bluesier rock and roll harmonic quality. But something that we hear often in this track, not just specific moments, is a tonality, presumably through a type of chromaticism, I think. There's this one little whirlwind idea that it was in the middle of the track and it was used to punctuate every other repetition of the riff. And it was this rising idea of half steps. Da 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 da. I'm not a singer, those probably weren't half steps because that sounded way too harmonious for what was actually happening here. But it was creating a lot of harmonic tension because it wasn't really following anything. I don't know that each of these steps, the groupings of three, were moving up chromatically, but everything was dealing in half steps in a way that removed any harmonic characteristic from it. It no longer felt like we were in any specific key or working with any specific chords. We were just utilizing a bunch of disparate notes combined. And it gave it a very chromatic property to it. And chromaticism is just utilizing every single note. We have 12 notes in the Western 12 tone scale. Uh, when we create keys and chords, we just select groups of those. Groups, five of them, six of them, seven of them, sometimes even eight and nine. We just basically exclude some, and that gives us specific characters and qualities to our sounds. Chromaticism, we use all the notes. That's it. It's a big fancy term uh, for no inclusion. It is no exclusion. It is the fully inclusive chord. Uh, I don't know where I'm... This is not a good video as far as I'm concerned. That's, uh, with, the, with the word choice I'm using today. Weird stuff's coming out of my mouth. Um, it's it's interesting because it's not utilized just in any one specific part. Much like the black and roll section, I can say, oh, this is when they took on a bluesier aspect. And nowhere else do they do that. But the chromatic licks 
pop up everywhere usually as a sort of punctuation they'll have something that unifies the riff and then they'll have an idea at the end that takes us back to the repetition of the riff that is chromatic I don't know necessarily the purpose of this other than to be disruptive and chromaticism can certainly feel disruptive when we have defined lines we can think of chords and keys as uh, a picture of uh, you know an uncolored picture in a, in a coloring book right you can certainly color within the lines that's within the chord or the key but you can borrow notes from outside of that that would be coloring outside of it and depending on how good of a colorer or a melody writer you are, um, the ways that you go outside the lines can be expressive and interesting, and that's where we get some of our jazzier, spicier sounds. We take notes that we wouldn't normally associate with the groups we're using right now and bring them in, and it sounds really cool. If you're a bad colorer or a bad musician, you're still learning, you know, uh, you can certainly pull in notes that have a negative effect and now it just looks like you're scribbling quickly and you're not coloring in the lines it just looks messy right what you're adding isn't additive to the end result it's detracting chromaticism is just tossing everything into the mix and when we do that after we had the set chord after we've basically done this outline of this picture we're like now we're just gonna splash a bucket of paint on it it feels disruptive and that's really the only way I can perceive it. But it's not disruptive in a way that to me feels antagonistic because my closest relationship for this sound is avant-garde jazz, which loves to use dissonance and chromaticism in funky ways. That's my take on this. It isn't meant purely for disruptiveness. It's just to introduce some sort of avant-garde element to it. And the whole track can kind of be viewed from that perspective. There are a lot of sections in here that I'm thinking, okay, this is neat. This is fine. There's nothing in here that I think is, is wrong or bad or anything like that. I'm not going to say that I enjoyed every moment, but there's a lot of cohesive components to this song. And those cohesive components will exist for 8, 16 bars or whatever, and then we'll move into something wildly disruptive. Maybe it'll just be a transition, a 4-bar idea until we go into the next cohesive idea. Maybe it's just a brand new cohesive idea that just jar, it's just very jarring against where we were. It doesn't feel like we naturally moved in that direction at all. This is very much how a lot of experimental and avant-garde music, to me, is written. There might be some rhyme or reason or purposeful intent behind these choices. They're just exceptionally obtuse to me as a listener. I don't understand the connections here. And that's what I see through a lot of this track. There are some neat moments throughout. They're also surrounded by ideas that make absolutely no sense to me on why they're there. And so the song ends up having a smorgasbord of ideas to it. In fact, I really like the black and roll part of this. We had some clean vocals come in. I thought they sounded really good against the uh, the high fuzzy distortion buzzsaw sounds of the guitar. The drums had some neat melodic ideas in here, having some really cool drum fills. The drummer could also get into a very robotic um uh, metronomic style of drumming in some of these sections but there's also some moments such as in the black and roll part where they were highly expressive with their patterns and I found that to be a really cool moment the production on this was also really well done many of the sections felt claustrophobic and compressed and contained like black metal does very well but there was a clarity to all of it and even when we brought in those clean vocals in the middle of the track I felt like they were produced in a way that still fit with everything else even though they weren't as fuzzy and distorted and destroyed as the rest of the sounds in this uh, track. But did it fit with everything else? No, not really. And You know, if there's a part of a black metal song where I like it, it probably is very different from the rest because I didn't really enjoy much of the rest of this track um, from a purely sonic directive. You know, I like the artisticness of it. I like the experimentation of it. I like the pushing the boundaries of, of combinations of sounds. 
but you give me a specific moment and ask me if I'd listen to that nonstop. No, I was, I was very fond of all the contrast. <laughs> if I didn't like something, something different was coming up soon. And if I didn't like that, well, something else was coming around the corner as well. There's also some really neat layering going on in here. We do have those atmospheric sounds in, in the track in places, but even aside from that, we look at the black and roll part and we have those clean vocals, but there are some, now that I think about it, uh, constricted airway style squeaking. I called it shrieking at the time, but it really didn't have the power behind it to be, I think, labeled as a shriek. It was more about a little bit of air coming out and it just creating more of a high-pitched sound. Again, I've, I don't want to guess as to how they created that sound. Black metal as a genre is... They can get very creative with how they make noises. I'll, I'll say that and we'll just leave it at that because black metal has some really dark albums on it as far as looking at the creation process. Um, but the end result here, to me, alludes to somebody being choked, which lines up with the story I kind of have of uh, physical altercation and uh, imprisonment and all this kind of stuff. And... You know, the title of the song is Anthropophagia, so it all kind of leads towards something. The title's like, oh, why do you think this person would be chained up in someone's basement, you know? Black metal, man, what? Kind of extreme metal in general. Very edgy, uh, shock value kind of stuff. I don't know. How do I feel about this song? What do I think the story is? I think I've already kind of touched on a lot of that, but there's also some parts that feel too overdone. I would say that on the whole, this song is very sinister. It's very eerie. It's very creepy. It leans into those gnarlier sounds to leave this, the listener on edge, maybe a little uncomfortable. As I mentioned, shock factor. But there was one moment... We had done the A section, I think it was. Maybe we had done a B section too. And then we quit to silence. Like the song just kind of stopped for a second. And everybody came in for the next part, which would have been cool. The contrast of zero to 10 from no volume to full volume. Except the vocalist came in just half a beat early. And I got to hear a little bit of the texture and tone and some of the uh, ways that they're making their gnarly sounds. And... It just kind of sounded like a cough for a moment. It just... Oh, man. It just it tickled me for whatever reason. I don't know. It's just... It sounded strange, and it was also uh, completely unexpected in an absurd kind of way. It was one of those situations where the extremity becomes comical. It becomes campy in a way. Um, and it's, I think it's a very tough line to ride. And I think that this song particularly stays on the side of the extreme of, of having an easier buy-in for a majority of this track. But that one moment to me, it was too much of a hurdle. And so I stopped viewing it in the antagonistic extremity and began to view it as comical camp. Maybe that's just me. I'm sure that's a very subjective take I have on that moment but i just still thinking about it and cracks me up i really hope the uh vocalist isn't watching this i'm not making fun of you bro it's just it's one of those things that uh i don't think it's intended to be comical and i don't think it is funny per se i just have a really weird sense of humor and i love absurdity it tickles me in ways and that part just seems really absurd to me. I wasn't expecting it. It kind of came out of nowhere. I don't know. I'm going to take a moment, see if I can find some lyrics, tie any of this up. Because I feel like I my thoughts on this are just as loose and disparate as the ideas that compose the structure of this track. Which is probably fitting. But maybe we can tie it all together and wrap it up in a neat little bow. And say this is what the song means in some capacity.
All right, Metal Archive saving the channel again. Saving the review again? I don't know. Not necessarily the channel. I don't think they even know I exist. Um, also, though, Metal Archive states that this came out in December of 2023, which predates the Bandcamp release by a few weeks. Um, I don't know which one's accurate, but Metal Archives is usually pretty good about it, and Bandcamp will only show the release of when it hit Bandcamp. I don't think it'll show a disc release. So... This probably came out last year, at least on CD. It is about cannibalism, for ritual sacrifice. Well, yeah, I mean, I was going to say maybe there's no sacrifice, but uh, you can't do cannibalism without sacrifice. So, uh, yeah, it is ritual sacrifice. Um, and, uh, apparently in this ritual, it has to be, or it is at least a child sacrifice, the newborn mix blood and wine, herbs and flesh, soma raptures entice. It talks about uh, a moon blood goddess incarnate gathering. We dance in the starlit desert night says you bring great destruction and per and terrible demise so they're doing this cannibalism ritual for this blood goddess in hopes that she brings about discord and destruction it says morning star bright and cold as death you are with the rhythm of the moon to the unlight of the stars let us take in human life to eclipse the world forevermore that's what the song is about. They're eating babies so that they can destroy the world uh, in hopes that they'll appease, well, I guess to appease this goddess who will destroy the world for them thanks to their sacrifice and ritual. That actually doesn't really fit the song too much. I was kind of hoping something a bit more esoteric and strange. And as far as black metal goes, this is pretty routine. So, uh, the chaos and cacophony of the, tr of the music of the song doesn't really fit the very straightforward elements of the lyrics, which is fine. I'm not saying that that is a bad thing. In fact, you give me lyrics that are understandable and I'm going to be happy about that all day. <laughs> I, I can actually read these and, and make a, make some sort of uh, analysis about it. But, uh, you know, usually when it comes to these more esoteric bands, musically at least, they also tend to have lyrics that match this. So it's a little bit of a surprise to find something so straightforward and simple. Those are my thoughts on Abigor's Moonstar Atherpaphia. That word, you know what it is. I said it a few times already. I think I'm let a uh, single mistake here. What are your thoughts on this? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to correct me on? Maybe you just have opinions and perspectives about it. Put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, which is above the comments, you'll find a link to Discord. No, you'll find a link to Link's, Link Saber? Link Tree. What am I even saying today? It take when you click on it, it takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could like, subscribe, and ring the bell, I greatly appreciate all three. I have to wrap this up before my brain completely fails me. That wraps it up for today. I'll see y'all tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. Until next time, remember to have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening. And remember to be critical, not cynical. That was backwards.